Hey, welcome back to the channel, and that was me just playing around with um, a new track for my album. As you remember, I released a video some weeks ago where I told you I was working on an album which will be released on cassette later on this year, hopefully. I've written a uh, small amount of songs, tracks, for this album already. And I always flesh out the, the structure of the song uh, on the piano, uh, or a keyboard, or a guitar, before I start arranging stuff. And what you heard was me doing some, uh, some pre-recordings of, uh, of an arrangement of that particular track. I've decided that for this album, I'm going to use the Roland MC500 sequencer for most of the tracks. And if you're wondering why I chose the MC500 when I have 10 other hardware sequencers from the 80s I could use, well, I just flipped a coin. <laughs> I had several I was thinking about using, but I'm going to use just one. So I'll limit myself to the MC500. And um, it has four uh, tracks, separate tracks. Actually, it has eight if I use the uh, Super MRC software, but I'm going to use four tracks uh, on the sequencer for each of the songs on the album. So that means I have to overdub, live overdub um, the other tracks I'm going to use or have on each song. The term song uh, or track goes uh, is tossed around here, but uh, when I mean when I say song, I can mean track, and when I say track, I can mean a song. So you should uh, I hope you hope you can bear with me on this one. Uh, but I'm going to use this sequencer and uh, hardware sequence four of the tracks for each song, uh, if that's what's needed. Uh, so that's a very cool limitation, I think. It's a, it's a limitation that will force me to think creatively about each and every song, how many tracks, etc., and what those tracks should be. I've also decided that another limitation I'm going to force upon myself for this album is that I'm going to use no drums. Maybe I'll stick to that towards the end, maybe I'll take a little detour and add a little bit of drums on tracks eventually, but um, I want this album to be a more creative process, making sounds that'll do the rhythm, do, doing the rhythmic parts, without turning to actual drums. Laying down a drum track it's, can often be a, a, a lazy thing. You, you just put on some tracks, some, some drum tracks, some drum sounds, just because you think you have to do it. And a lot of uh, modern synth wave uh, are using those cliché type of drums. I've used them myself, and maybe I'll use them again, but I want to stay clear of that as much as I can on this album. I'll, I'll much rather do some live overdubs with percussion. Uh, so be prepared for uh, not much in terms of drums on this album. I want to paint the images, the emotions with the uh, more ambient type of sounds. So um, I'm the creative brain behind this operation and I'm really not looking for for advice or tips or uh, suggestions for how this should pan out. That is all up here. So we have the Korg EX800 on MIDI channel 2, and it's important to put these synths into Omni off so they won't trigger uh, on all MIDI channels. That's important in a multi-timbral sequencer setup like this. So I'll set it to MIDI channel 2, which is output from the MC500 sequencer. And I'm also detuning each of the synths slightly to get a more organic sound. And this EX800 is fed into the Yamaha DMP7 as a submixer, and I'm using two of the internal effects of the DMP7 here, a reverb and the symphonic chorus effect. So that's how that sounds throughout most of the of the song on mid channel 2. So I can reach all the synths from this KX88 by setting the, the mid channels I want to record and listen to in the chain. 
and this is the bass sound on MIDI channel 3, and can you guess what synth I've used for that? It is the Matrix 12. And I've lowered the velocity in the sequencer so the bass sounds are a little bit more mellow. On the Matrix 12 you can set the different zones of a sound to different MIDI channels if you want to. So I'm setting this and these zones to MIDI channel 3. I think I missed one there, you can see a channel 4 which I have to adjust to MIDI channel 3. So now I can reach this from the KX88 on MIDI channel 3. And the Prophet VS is used for the pads in this. But this is only for this video demonstration. On the final recording, when I record this song, I will play these pads live when I record. And I will do that with the Juno 106 as well, as I do in this video. And here's the MC500 with those three sequence tracks. The EX800 doing the arpeggiated part, the Matrix 12 doing the bass, and those pads. If you listen carefully, you can actually hear the, the VS pads distorting in the chorus. So uh, I've made a note about this, so I'll uh, adjust that later when I'm doing the final recordings for this song. And you're not hearing this in, in this video, but there will be a minute and a half of more ambient uh, sounds like talking, natural sounds. In a, uh, in a intro part of this. I, I have this written down and rehearsed it, but of course I haven't recorded that yet either, as, um, as this is only a demonstration and just showing myself going through the different parts, etc., to, to learn the arrangement myself. And of course, since this is all MIDI, I can change the tempo very easily. I'm very happy with how the bass sound sounds so uh, fat and deep together with the other sounds here. So I look forward to exploring that further. So thank you so much for watching and I look forward to sharing more updates with you in uh, the process of making this album. I'm Espencroft, thank you for watching.